of tours, Walker. <laughs> what you got? There you got is. it! Oh, look at that! Oh, sailing a dolphin. Presented by Yellowfin with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. So you like to fly them kites a lot up the Keys, and you know I do it every once in a while, one kite. But you know you you always flying two kites. Always flying two, ba banking them, and you know we went through the process of uh, taking the number one snapshots uh, leads and just adding one, two, or three where I took. One of our kites was really tough, you know, it didn't, it was a left flying kite, I had brought the wrong one, and it didn't want to fly right. We had to really put a lot of lead on there, but we got it, and you know, that you can, we could adjust the height we could fly, and during the day, the wind changed, and I knew that well, that was gonna happen, so I brought a variety of kites. We started off with our, with our standard SFE kites, you know, the 10 to 20 mile hour kite, the red and green ones, we had them banked, we, and since we were, at the time, we started off with the pilchards, so we didn't want them to fly too high, so we had them banked and low flying. And then, as that wind started to pick up, they, they, the kites would have been fine, but the motors on the electrics to bring them in were struggling. Yeah. So we switched to the next one. You don't go fishing without a variety of light wind, medium, and heavy wind kites. It's just, if you're gonna do it, you know, it's, you're all in. It's, it's just, if you're gonna kite fish, you gotta go all in. Yeah, yeah no, you can't get away with just one, that's for sure. You know, and that wind picked up, and you had to get that bigger, you know, that that uh, heavy wind kite out there. Uh, and and not only that, you know, people probably saw that you have those little corks on there. And what those corks do is that wind's blowing so hard. If you pop that main line, yeah, you don't want your kite to sink, and you'll lose your kite. You're out a hundred something bucks. So hundred twenty-five dollars every time. Put those corks back there on that spar. When that thing does crash, it doesn't sink to the bottom. It stays up on the surface. There's a chance you can get it back. You really got to make sure when you're ready to fly that kite that you 100% have everything ready to go, everything out of the way. You got the maximum amount of wind hitting that kite so that thing can launch high. You know, have somebody holding it out there. You working the, the kite reel and get that thing up in the wind and let it back. And I'd like to get it back quick. You know, I'm a big fan of getting it back there as quick as I can, clean get up air. in that clean air. And it seems to work the best for me. You know, we didn't have a problem. It worked out great on anchor. We, we spread them. You know, obviously, you know, we're waiting them like you say. We're putting split shots on them. We want to spread them things out as far as we can because what that does is that we're covering more water. So as those fish are tailing through, migrating through, swimming by, you know, we've got some baits hanging over here in 150 yeah. feet. we got baits over here in 110 feet. And you see it a million times. A sailfish tailing right at you. When he sees the boat, he goes down and under. Yeah. So you don't want to fish downwind of your boat. You want to fish offshore and inshore because a fish Rather than go, they're either going to go around you or way under. So again, you also want to get them further back because they're eventually going to pop back up. So you, with the kite, you can get your baits further away and uh, perfectly presented with no leader in the water, no hooks. I mean, we, that's well documented why you use the kite. It's just it's the perfect presentation. Yeah, it's just I mean, the bait sitting right there on the surface. Right. In most sense, sometimes the hook's not even in the water. I mean, it's just the belly and the pecs and the, and the fish just thrash it. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. If you fewer tangles because the, the fish can't get wrapped up in a leader as it lays on the water. You get away with a lot heavier leader, yep. a bigger hook. It gets you're not rougher, seeing any of that you want stuff. to finish the quick off quicker, you can go to 40 or 50 or even 60 pounds. It's funny because when, you know, when I started out guiding, you didn't throw anything but 60 out there. Right. And now, I mean, we're 25 I'd or 30. Fire you. <laughs> yeah. Now we're 25 or 30 pounds because of the fact that this, this, this leader material now is so strong compared to what it used to be like that you can get away with that lighter line and get a lot more bites. And, and the circle hooks too are always, you know, Majority most of the time, time hitting the corner. So that leader's not even touching that bill. Yeah. You know, the J-hook gets a little further inside the mouth and so that you got the wear. So that 30 pound goes, gets worn out quicker. But generally with the circle hooks now, it's almost every time in the corner of the mouth and that leader has only touched the bill one time probably as it's coming, right. coming tight and it's not getting constantly sawed as the fish is diving and uh, digging and Jump pulling. In, yeah. Got something looking in my long kite bait. Oh yeah. You and me looking at it. <laughs> Just want to keep those baits right on surface. That tail beat. 
That's free advertising right there. Don't eat me. Oh, go on. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> Goggle in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Yeti, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Simrad, brought to you by the new Simrad NSS Sport touchscreen display. And by Costa Sunglasses and Tailwalker Charters. Here we go, got some more action here. Look at those frigate birds, they are enjoying this feast. Oh, big old black fan blow up back there. Well, it's winter time. They'll move back into the reef for us. Look at that symphony of frigate birds trying to get dinner without getting wet. You've got the whole area in tune to that spot. I mean, these pilchers come from somewhere, the fish are waiting. We need to figure out. Let's drift the whole seven mile bridge instead of just this one spot. Yeah, do a little drift and cover more ground. Yeah. And again, the current and wind couldn't have been a better scenario. The boat laid beautifully in a trough. So we had about two kites, four baits downwind, and then you started messing with a button rod on the bottom and, yeah, and, and one more on the surface. Yeah, yeah. So now we got, instead of four rods, we've got six, and we could have had more. We we're just limited by, we were only limited by amount of rod holders on the boat at that time. All of a sudden, we're talking back to back. I'm watching down sea, you're watching up sea. We had a good footprint, you know, I mean, that footprint was large. I mean, we had both kites banking, one banking left, one banking right, covering that whole downwind side. And then the upwind side, I had the flat line running way out there. So, I mean, we, we had a big presence on that reef edge and the drift was so perfect. We were in 110 for miles. I mean, we could have gone and gone that perfect east wind with that west tide, had us just tracking so perfectly. And, uh, you know, and, and it worked. I mean, we, you saw we had a window shopper. Well, we, we were busy catching your red grouper. As soon as you started messing, we, we started deboning the ballyhoos, and we, were, we we got that going on, and you're like, I'm getting hooked up. So, yeah, right. You know, we're just sail fishing here, right? And just, you said, hey, let's drift with a bait on the bottom. We, our our pilch is a little small, so we set some fresh ballyhoos. Yeah. You're covering, the out of them. you're covering so much ground, you know, you might as well drag something. We're moving two and a half miles an hour. We're at four baits out. Actually, five baits are set four this way, two this way. Yeah, I got one flat line. Yeah. We slid one down to the bottom. This is, you know, look for something delicious. I mean, it could be an Atlantic sharp nose. Oh, shark. <laughs> I mean, it could be a jack or something, but still, man, it's all fun. <laughs> he didn't really give me too much problems, you know. He he's nope. pretty well behaved. Oh, mutton snapper. Gag? That's a mutt. Red? Red. Or big red. <laughs> That'll eat. Got it? We well, don't even have to measure that one, Skipper. Oh, look how white he is. White sand bottom. Look at that mouth. Is that lobster coming out? Nah, that's just his gut. Oh, boy, he is. Look pink, how isn't white he is. He's, like a, he's the same color as a darn mud snapper. Yeah. He's pink as can be. You're calling that color? No, he's pretty light. Nice. You got a good grip on him? I'm not yeah, snatching. Yeah, I got it. Cool, man. I'll tell you what, make me another one of those up. I'll be buying another ballet. Yeah, because, you know, that's something anybody can do. The All ballet, right. you buy them in a pack. All right. There's nothing to it, you know? Absolutely. You don't have to have a live bait. You don't have to have, know how to throw a cash net. <laughs> D-bone ballet. Look at that thing. Put up in the sun. I, want, I mean, that thing is as pink as a mutton snapper. Oh, he's got so big fillets on him, though. Yeah, you drag him along, you know, and you're going to hook up. Now I'm thinking maybe should I rig my own rod, start bottom fishing too, and we, we get that nice big red grouper in the boat, and then all a clicker goes off, and it's your clicker on your short. Dude, man, let's do that again. Do I want to see you do that. Got a bite. It's a short kite. Don't get a sail. Don't be a sail. Oh boy, proud of the pin. Come on, give me some, give me some love. Where you at? Where you at? at us. Where you at? Where you at? Squeaking right at us. Come on. Where you at? Air out. It's 
Stay on. Don't break me off. King Mac will cut you right off. Coming oh, up. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 Goggle eye in the face. Oh, no. Oh. There he is, there he is. You got another one? He's right there, look. Oh, there you go. There you know he's up. Wind up this flat line, wind up the flat line. He's going right towards your flat. That didn't work out right. Uh-uh. You're supposed to, I'm supposed to get the sail while you're catching a grouper. Man, that was a little goggle eye, too. Hey. What, what a bad break. They can jump anyway, but right at you, you know? Yeah. It cost it right out, yep, you know what I mean? His mouth is open. There's no way for it to hook into a corner of his mouth. No way. Especially All right, he's good. right here on my bait. All right. Can you give me a new bait? Yeah. Is he going to bite you? I don't know. I mean, he wants to. Got a hot bait. Look, 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 oh, look, look, look. There he's going to hit. He's going to hit. Oh, it's in the engines. All right, here he is. He's looking for something to eat. That oh. one's hiding. He's hiding in the boat. Just, you know, there, there he is, right here. Oh, he's chasing the first one. Or oh, he's chasing yours. He's going to eat them both. Yes! All right, we got to bite at him anyway. Not often you get two tries. Oh, my God. Oh, he's jumping again. Come on, babies. Come on, baby. Now we got him right. Woo! <laughs> I don't want to jump. Why are that one? Oh. Ah. There it is! <laughs> <laughs> Think he's gonna eat again? Where's my jail? He came right to the back of the boat. Looking yeah. for something to eat because we just took it from him. He yeah. come back around the back. He, had, he didn't really know that what was going on there. Yeah, pitched him the bait. I think I pulled him off again. <laughs> he gave us two shots. He gave us two shots. And then, did we pick him up on the long bait? No. Or a different fish? No. After we after he got on that second time with spinning rod, he he was done with us. He yeah. went to tell his friends that that was not a yeah, good feeding station there. We had educated him. All right. But I guess it just we, the drift kept going. We, we we drifted an hour. We were making about three and a half you know, miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. two knots and sometimes, sometimes three. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I like it. But, you know, it's weird how it all happens at once when it happens, you know? It's like... Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Mercury, Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here, and by King Sailfish Mounts, and Spear One. You know, this new Makaira reel is very, very comfortable, very lightweight, and we use this a lot for when we're kite fishing down here in the Keys. And what kite fishing means is you actually want to suspend your bait from a kite where it's laying right on the surface. And what that allows you to do is, is to have a lot more fish swim up into the presence of this bait and not feel the line, the hook, all these things that are in the water. So we can have a bait out 100 yards or you know 75 yards and the only thing in the water is that bait fish I mean your hook is even sitting up out of the water it's a great feature it allows you to get a lot more bites um, you know you put a cork on there which is a visual aid only the only reason you see that cork out there is so when you're looking for your bait and you want to know how far where it is you can look out and you can actually see the cork and say okay there's my long bait there's my short bait um, a really cool thing your reel has to be super fast when you're kite fishing because when this this little ring right here goes all the way up to the kite, to the clip. When you get that bite, that drops and free falls, right? So you need to be able to pick up. Let's say you're fishing 75 yards out, you're gonna have to pick up three times the amount of line. So you need something very fast in order to get tight on that fish and to make a solid hookup. These reels are extremely fast, extremely lightweight, and hold a ton of line. Uh, you know, we had some of our fish get away from us, and I would almost bet to say that they were four or five hundred yards out there and there was still plenty of line on the reel to where we did not have to rush and chase that fish down. If you want to try some kite fishing, this one's really cool. Check it out at your local Bass Pro Shop. I don't know what we got. Hauled ass, I know that. I didn't see the bite. 
It's a big dolphin. Big dolphin? Yeah. I want that sail to come back, man. He's coming back. Where are you at? Tell you what. It's a heavy lifter gaffer. Uh-huh. I'll just grab him. If we can't grab him and he gets away. Oh, well. We're good. We got grouper for dinner. It's all more than we can eat. Yeah. Caught some sails. Missed some sails. Missed some sails. Caught got oh, some bonitas. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you got that? now? Sailfish. That's a sailfish. Yep. Is he on you? Yep. Tried to be. God, it's coming to. Come on. Are you on or wire? <laughs> bitty, bitty trouble. <laughs> good luck with that. Come on, get the bite. I don't want you to jump off another one now. Got him on? I don't know. That's a fish. Yep, that's a fish. We know there's a sail back there. When it rains, it pours, Walker. <laughs> what you got? There you got is. him! <laughs> Look at that! Redemption! <laughs> oh, sailing a dolphin. Oh my god, what a double header. I got the box, you grab it. Wait, dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll eat him. We'll eat that one. Want to be on our show? Well, check us out on Facebook and find out how you can win an opportunity to come fishing with Scott and I on Into the Blue. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Seaguar, always the best fishing line. Okuma Fishing Tackle, there's no stopping Okuma. Marine Formula Stable, for everyday optimal performance and protection. And by Ameritrail Boat Trailers and Under Armour. He's up! It was rough, it was blowing 30 at some time, but we were fishing with everything lined up, perfect. You know, you don't really notice how rough it is, but man, once you hook a fish and you need to chase him down, yeah. and I don't know why those fish love to swim <laughs> against south the current. South southeast. But against the current. Uh -huh. You would think, if I was hooked, I'm gonna swim with the current. I'm gonna use all that extra momentum to get away from whatever's bothering me. That never happens. No, they go up current, so we had to turn and take that, that fish up sea, and uh, there was some times where I came all the way back instead of being on the bow right. to, to get back there by the console with you just because it's a lot less beating yep. I'm going to take up there. I was going up and down two, three feet. You were going up and down six, seven yeah. feet. Yeah, so I got to move back you know, where it was a lot, lot calmer of a ride, and we pushed ahead, and we gained a lot of line, and then he'd do it again to us. He'd go down. Well, besides the boat handling, you, as the angler, you were doing all over that drag because you wouldn't anticipate that we weren't going to get over that way. Oh, I had to, yeah. The, you, you had to constantly you keep that drag loosened. Yeah, and we'll see, the crazy thing is, is this, like, so this fish is here swimming into the current. We come up on a big wave. He's not taking off, but the wave's pushing us back. The drag's going out. Right. So it's, it's, it's a constant battle with the drag. It's not necessarily the fish. It's you going away from the fish. You it's causing that drag. You anticipate every element, the up, the down, the left, the right. Plus the fish wanted to jump. When he's jumping, sound. you're pointing that rod out there. You're giving we everything did some you need. Great jobs when he would go crazy on a backside of a wave. Where you, you know, you're stretched out trying to keep it just so we land without landing on the leader. And then a eight foot wave washes by and you're he'd surf it. Okay. Take off another 20, 30 feet. Yes. You know, so they know how to get away. Um, and you just gotta play them real easy, take your time, and uh, be careful out there because like I said, there was some big waves at some time. It's coming up again. Yeah, yeah, he's a good one. Man. He's been tough, man. Look at him. That's a, that's a, I mean, white marlin stuff. That's what white marlin are made of. That fish has been around the block, baby. Roganville. <laughs> tough. Put on a heck of a show. What a warrior. He's a stud, Walker. I got a few. He's, I thought he was going to try me. I, he, You're trying to spear you. That is an angry fish. 
is so fat. in this position before. All right. Grab his tail. Uh. Maybe you're rolling up. I will. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh my God, what a great Look at this. I know. Got a deformed this tail. This bill is completely healed over. That broken it's bill. Completely healed over. Look at, look at his sail. What a tough fish, man. Woo. That's 40 fish. minutes. 40 minutes. He's ready to swim home. What do you think? You go about 60 pounds? 60 all day long. Yeah. Awesome fish, man. Put all her right, in here for me. All right. Put her ahead. Woo! What a battle. Awesome what a day. Fish, dude. <laughs> That's a good day, man. We all caught right, all baby. kinds of fish. And it is rough, buddy. <laughs> Take our time, get into Marathon, and I'm buying. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah.